Our scripture passage this morning is from Colossians chapter 3, uh, and we're going to read verses 1 through 14. So it starts at 3, and it says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you've taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. The word of God this morning. You know, friends, I, if you don't know me, if you're, if you're new around here, my name is Steve Sherrill, and, and I'm the pastor here. And, and I, I'm excited to, to be with all of you this morning because, you know, many of us that were in this room, you saw all of those who, who stood up and helped with VBS. Many of us had a, had a really busy week volunteering with Vacation Bible School. I know some of you are, are probably still recovering from, from all of the, the music and the, and the screaming and the, the laughing and the games and the, the crafts and the snacks and the deviled eggs and, uh, and the, all the high fives and, and everything else. You know, I, I, was, um, I was the preschool games leader this week, um, much to my chiropractor's chagrin. When I, when I actually went in on Monday afternoon to get adjusted for a, a normal appointment, um, she, she asked why my back was so messed up. She said, what is wrong with you? And I said, well, VBS, I'm preschool games leader. And, uh, and she was not happy as my chiropractor that I would be spending much of my week bent over like this, talking to these little, beautiful, smiley kids. She even asked me, half joking if she wanted if I wanted her to write me a doctor's note so that I could participate in another group at VBS any other group I think she was only half kidding so if you're like me if you're if you're still sort of recovering from from a crazy week at vacation bible school just just know that your time and your energy and all of the love that you poured into the kids and their families this week was not spent in vain because we had 177 kids hear and experience God's love through you this week. And I, I'm, I'm going to take a moment here. I, I'm really grateful. I'm grateful for, for our children's director, Steve Moss. Steve's sitting in the back row. Steve, stand up for a second in case people don't know you. That's Steve. Everybody wave at Steve back there. Um, I am I'm grateful for Steve for, for all of the work that he put into making last week such an incredible experience for all those kids. And, I, and I'm going to brag on him for, uh, for a second here. So, so you just got to let me do this. See, most of you probably don't know this. But Steve, even though he's our children's director, Steve has never once planned or led a vacation Bible school of any sort anywhere at any church. This was his first time putting all of the details together for a vacation Bible school, organizing all of the curriculum and publicizing it to the community and recruiting all of the volunteers and then trying to resource each and every one of them throughout the week. He has spent many, many hours as a part-time employee, remember, making sure that, that he did his very best 
You know, honestly, I would have been terrified if I was in his position because, see, many of you here at this church have, have helped with our Vacation Bible School for years and years, and so you actually knew a lot of the details involved in VBS more than he did. And I know that Steve was so concerned and, and, and spent so much of his time and energy making sure that, that he didn't disappoint all of those kids and families that were going to come to our Vacation Bible School expecting an incredible week. We are, we're truly blessed as a congregation to have Steve and to have his family as part of our ministry team. So thank you, Steve. Now I also, yeah. I also want to thank all of you again. I know I had you stand and I thanked you, but, but I want to thank you because many of you spent, spent, spent countless hours you, you put in the time either, either to get ready for VBS or actually during the week volunteering here for VBS. Many of you came to the rescue for Steve, and you helped him to, to figure out some of the details that he would have never known if you hadn't said, oh, hey, this is, this is what we've done before, and it's worked. You know, Steve couldn't actually, you know, during the week, he couldn't say enough about our Never Betters group. That's our 55 kind of ish plus group of people. Um, and he said that, man, it's just so, it's so much fun to see how many of them stepped up before Vacation Bible School and even during the week. And so, so for all of you, whether you're, you're in the Never Betters or whether you're not, thank you all from the bottom of my heart for helping to make this Vacation Bible School happen. You know, why is it that we do this? Why, why do we sacrifice so much for events like Vacation Bible School? Why, why do we wear ourselves out? Why do we stress ourselves out for, for like a big one-day event or, or a one-week event like Vacation Bible School? Why do we do it? We do it because we want others to see Christ the way that we see Him, right? See, we see something that the world doesn't. And we desperately want them to know we desperately want them to see the love of God in a life-changing way. And so today, we're going to start this, this new series of messages that's going to be five weeks, including today, and we're calling it Vivid. And this is we're, during this series, Vivid, we're going to explore what it looks like to see others through the spiritual lens of Christ. You know, last week during Vacation Bible School, we understood that, that we would have a lot of, of children here who, who might not know who God is, or who, who may not know much about the God that we know. And we didn't look at these children as they came in. We didn't look at them confused as to, to why it is that they don't know about God. Instead, we, we get excited about introducing them to a God that we know loves them. See, we could just keep the love of God all to ourselves. We could just do what makes us happy and comfortable. But if we did that, we wouldn't really be Christians then, would we? If we just do the things that make us happy, if we do things that, that make us comfortable, we're not really Christians. See, doing what makes us happy and comfortable, is the exact opposite message. It's the opposite message of, of Christ. It's the opposite message that, that when Christ was here on this earth that he shared with us. It's the opposite vision that God has placed on the hearts of this church. Our vision here at this church is this, that we understand that we, the church, don't exist for us. We are the church, and we exist to impact the world with the love and message of Jesus Christ, everyone, every day, everywhere. See, when we receive new life in Christ, we view the world differently. And when we see things differently, then it changes everything. I want to I show you a video in just a second of a man who has been colorblind his entire life. So this man, he's 66, he's been colorblind his whole life, and he receives this, this birthday present, and it's these glasses, they're called enchroma. I don't know how they work, but they're these sunglasses-looking things, and when you put them on, 
and you're a certain type of colorblind, you can then actually see the color that the rest of us see. And so this man, who's been colorblind his whole life, receives for his birthday these special glasses, and it changes his entire perspective on life. Let's look at that video. Happy birthday, baby, from Happy all birthday. of us. Put them on. Put them on. Put them on. The sunglasses. How does that look? Look at the balloon. <laughs> Can you see with our eyes now, baby? What colors you see? Gold. You see colors now? (laughs) 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 Now you have rose colored glasses, baby. Now you see with our eyes. Do you like the balloons? (laughs) Turn around. What about the flowers on the house? look like mud. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like brighter mud. <laughs> oh. Who did that? All of us. So this the 66-year-old former bodybuilder, tough guy. He couldn't even find words to express himself when he saw color for the first time. I don't know if you noticed him continuing to to look down over his glasses and keep putting them on. Like, am I I really seeing? Is this real? Is this what I'm seeing? He's crying. He can't can't contain himself. I love what he's, he's, I don't know what he's doing with his arms. But like, there's this adrenaline of, of excitement flowing through him. He doesn't even know kind of how to stand still at that moment. And I wanted to to share that video with you because see, as followers of Christ, our reaction to our new life should be much the same as that man's reaction. See, once we see Christ, once we see how He heals all of our brokenness, once we see how Christ forgives our sins and, and how He saved our lives. We should be so absolutely overwhelmed that a, that a, a tiring week of vacation in Bible school or, or, or a week-long mission trip is just icing on the cake for all of the ways that we could be telling others about Christ. And so I want to look at a, at a couple things that, that we can do to help us keep our vision clear. We read from Colossians this morning, and we read in chapter 3, and I want to read verse 1 again, or I'm sorry, verse 3 again. It says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. So here's your first blank. If you want to know how to see clearly, it's to set our heart on things above. Set our heart on things above. See, when we think about the heart, We think about 
about the things that, that we value, things that we care about, things that we love. Colossians tells us to focus our heart on Christ. To focus our heart on Christ who is seated at the right hand of God. You know, Monday morning, right before Vacation Bible School started, before our first day, Steve had invited all of the VBS leaders to, to please come early so that we would have time to do a morning devotion. So he gathered them all together and he shared a quick devotion with all of us, trying to help us get our focus, to get in the right focus for the, the, for the day and for the week. And so he, he actually read from Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 through 39. And this is what that says. It says, anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Now, for, for many of us who, who read this passage of Scripture, it, this, this part of Scripture, actually, for, for a lot of us, we read that, and it seems really harsh. It seems to be actually void of, of love. But the exact opposite is true. This passage is telling us the same thing that the passage that we read today from Colossians is saying. It's saying, set your heart on things above. Love God more than anything else. And when you do that, when you set your heart on things above, and when you love God more than anything else, you may initially think that you're going to lose your life, but you're actually going to find it. See, when you love God more than anything and anyone else, and notice I didn't say love the church more than anything else. I said love God more than anything else. When you love God more than anything else, you'll be able to love your, your mother and your father, your son and your daughter. You're going to be able to love them in a much deeper way. And so, so set your heart on where Christ is. Christ is seated at God's right hand. And when we let our heart dwell on, on eternity with God, then we won't fill our heart with all of the things in this world that always fall short. When we set our heart on, on things above, the things of, uh, that, that are here on earth that that, that we are engaged in, they'll get even better. The relationships that we have here on earth, when we set our heart on things above, our relationships, the way that we can love one another, will be much more deep. Be much deeper than it would if we focused on them first. Now the next thing that Colossians teaches us, if we want to have a, a clear vision, is that we also need to set our mind on things above. That's your next fill in the blank. So we've got to set our hearts on things above, but set our mind on things above. Now while our heart is, is about feelings and, and emotions, the mind is our, our intellect, right? Our, our decisions, our logic and, and reason. Colossians chapter 3 says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. See, we're told in Colossians, we're told here to think about Christ, to let every decision be honoring to Him above ourselves. Because when, when we accepted Christ, we died to the self. And our life is now His. If you, if you want a vivid picture of who we are called to be, then think about Christ. You know, Steve challenged us on that first morning of vacation Bible school. He challenged all of us who were volunteering to, to meet every issue that we faced with a question. And that question was, well, how can I help you? How can I help? And so if we saw another one of our volunteers who may have been a little frustrated or, or frazzled or impatient, then, then our response to them, our question would be, how can I help? If we saw a kid who maybe looked a little lost or sad or, or you know, wasn't used to being away from mom and dad or maybe brother or sisters in another group, and I, whatever we saw, we could say to the child, how can I help? If we saw any of the families coming in that maybe looked confused, weren't quite sure how to drop off their kids or where to pick them up, how can I help? 
one of our volunteers took this advice that Steve gave to heart, and, and, and she shared with my wife during the week, she said, you know, that phrase, how can I help, was on my mind throughout Vacation Bible School, and so after VBS, I, I had to go to work, and I couldn't help but, but continue asking the, the customers and the co-workers, how can I help? She had set her mind on that phrase, and it continued in all the other areas of her life. And when we set our mind on Christ, the exact same thing will happen with us. It will flow into every area of who we are. The way that we interact with people changes. The way that, the way that we view ourselves, the way that we view others, will suddenly be different. Have you ever heard the story of this gardener who he, he came across a briar growing in a ditch? And he decided that he was going to dig up that, that briar with, with his shovel. And, and, and so he, he digs up this briar and, and the briar said to itself, what is this gardener doing? Doesn't he know that I'm just a worthless briar? But the gardener then took the briar back to his garden and planted it among his flowers. The briar then said to itself, what a mistake he has made, planting me here among all of these beautiful roses. Then the gardener came one more time, and he made a slit in the briar with a sharp knife, and he grafted it with a rose. And when summer came, there were lovely roses blooming from that old briar. And the gardener then said, your beauty is not do to what came out, but to what I put in. You see, when we set our heart and mind on Christ, we are allowing Him to fill us with Himself. And that's going to allow us to be His beautiful hope for this broken world. Now, the last thing, that, and the, the, the very blunt thing that Colossians tells us in order to, to see clearly this world is this, that we must put to death our earthly desires. And that's your last fill in the blank. Put to death earthly desires. Pretty blunt here in Colossians. In verse 5 it says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Now, pretty blunt in Colossians, but when it comes down to it, this is not easy for us. For us, the earthly nature is what we're most comfortable with. It's hard to think of, of eternity. We tend instead to focus on the, on the here and now, what makes us happy, what, what makes us sad, what, what we think we should do to feel good about life. Putting to death our earthly nature is also putting to death those sins that we allow to control us. And if we look at Verses 8 through 10 now in Colossians chapter 3, it says, But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. Don't miss these. Rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you've taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge and the image of its creator. See, when we set our hearts and minds on Christ, putting to death our earthly nature, anger and, and slander and malice, those things should never flow from our life. They should never flow from our hearts. How can they when we see the price that was paid for us. See, when we focus on, on the love that God extended to us, how can we respond with anything other than, than the love and grace and patience? See, and when we respond to, to God's love, and when we respond to God's grace with more love and with, with more grace, lives around us can be changed. Have any of you heard of, uh, there's a movie, it's a documentary called The Dropbox. I wonder if anybody's ever heard of this. It's a, it's a documentary on a South Korean pastor who cares for abandoned 
babies. I think we have a poster, like a movie poster, if you're looking for it. So, so this, is, this is the Dropbox movie poster. And, and this film was, was directed by a guy named Brian Ivey. Now, Brian Ivey said that he felt compelled to, to create this film after hearing the story of how this pastor creates an actual drop box where parents could safely and anonymously leave their unwanted baby in the box. See, Brian saw this, directing this film as, as a ticket to stardom. But Brian didn't know that his life would be changed from this experience. See, he had always up to this point viewed Christianity as a joke. He always viewed, viewed evangelical Christians as an even bigger joke. He believed that, that Christians were people who thought that they were just better than everybody else. But what he found through the making of this film, the, the Dropbox, is that Christians are the one people who don't think they're good. They just understand that they're wanted. That they're wanted by a God who loved them so much that He gave His only Son as a sacrifice for them. Brian says that his greatest mistake was thinking that he was so good that he didn't need to be saved. But he learned through, through the making of this film as he watched the love and compassion of this pastor that in the same way that this Christian man loved and cherished these, these babies, that there is a God in heaven who loves and cherishes him. Have you been changed? Have you been changed forever by the love of God? If you have, then let the story be seen and heard and experienced by those who don't yet know it. Because see, it's our job to help their vision of God be so vivid that they can't ignore His love anymore. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you again for this week that we've had at this church. For the encouragement that we should all be able to receive by seeing so many kids come through this building and, and knowing that they're hearing the stories of you and how much you love them. But God, that's not meant to stay on VBS week. It's meant to go, that, that story, that, that picture is meant to go with us everywhere we go. Lord, I, I ask that you would challenge each one of us. Would you speak to each one of us, even right here, right now, as we sit here and pray? Have we been so changed by your love and by what you have done for us that the people we come into contact with see a vivid picture of how much you love and cherish them? If they don't, God, then, then would you work in our hearts and lives? Would you help us to begin setting our hearts and our minds on Christ and, and, and putting away all of those things that, that take us away from your word? And instead, God, would you help us to understand what it is that you've done for us so that, that no matter where we go, no matter who we're interacting with, that they would begin to see a picture of your love for them as well. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.